finding a job in big cities, you can just throw in a resume and then just wait for them to call you and you do the interview. But finding a job in regional area is not gonna be that simple. It's a lot harder. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Theta PTE. Uh, it's very good to, um, to see you all today and uh, I just wanna say thank you very much for supporting my previous uh, video. Um, now today I want to share with you something new, um, something that is not relevant to PTE. So today I would like to talk about um, how do you find a job in regional area. Okay, so why this topic? Because I have seen, I have met a lot of uh, you know international students, especially my my students, um, you know, who come from Melbourne or Sydney or you know different big cities, and they come down into Hobart, and you know. They, um, they, they are having a lot of problems to find a job. So I just want to you know, share what I have done, what I have known over the years, working as an employee and also as an employer, and I hope these experiences uh, you know, will be beneficial for you. Okay? Um, if you wonder why I'm dressing so nice today, <laughs> not because uh, I want to act as an employer, but because I will have a live stream with Vision First in an hour, so I thought, you know, why not just dress well for, for one and, 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 and let you guys see my new suit. Okay, so when you think of moving down to a regional area and finding a job, what you have to get in your head is you need to have the right mindset. So what is the right mindset? Number one, don't expect too much. Okay, we are living in a small community, in a small city, much, much smaller compared to uh, big cities uh, like, you know, Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane, okay? So do not expect that you can easily find a job as you used to do in big cities, all right? Number two, you have to have the right strategies because finding a job in big cities, you can just throw in a resume and then just wait for them to call you and you do the interview. But finding a job in regional area is not going to be that simple. It's a lot harder. Number three, you have to follow up. Okay, so what I find um, a lot of people, especially young people, are doing nowadays is they hand in the resume or they just you know send in the application and that's it. They do not care about you know where my application is up to, or they don't even care about whether or not the employer is actually uh, following you. So you have to follow up. Okay, you need to give them a call after you send a resume and say, "Hey, look, I just sent in a resume. I saw a job advertisement somewhere, and I hope that you already received my email. And if you need anything, just give me a call. And maybe a week later, just bring them back and say, "Hey, you know, I sent in a resume. I haven't." Uh, heard anything back from you? Just wondering where it is it up to? Uh, no one is going to be uh, angry about it. Okay, so a lot of Vietnamese people think that you know it is not polite to follow the um, employer uh, regarding your application, and that's not true. Okay, um, I used to work for an Australian company, and they actually don't care. About what they actually care is, are you really interested in this job? That is because when there is one open position. You know, a lot of people are applying for it and not all of them are really interested in it. You know, some of them are already having a job. They just want to, you know, uh, give yourself, uh, give themselves a, a second chance or they just think of maybe a far better job or maybe a far a, a, an extra income stream. It's all sort of those things, you know. So if you are really, really uh, in need of a job and you are really interested in getting one, and you should follow your employer. Lastly, you have to treat finding a job as a full-time work. When I say full-time work, it means you will need to spend about eight hours a day just to find a job. You, know, you will be sending resume, writing resume, writing your cover letters, uh, you know, uh, doing some walk-in handy application, as well as following your um, employers. And that is not something you want to do, you know, maybe once or twice a week. You want to do it every day on a consistent basis in order to get a job faster and more effectively. Okay. So, number two, what are the jobs that are available in regional area? Okay, uh, there will be certain jobs that are always available. Some things like hospitality or tourism. Okay, uh, if you are thinking of applying a job as a waiter or as a waitress or a kitchen hand or a barista, 
those jobs are always available. Okay, it's up to you how you apply for it. Other jobs that a lot of people are not really thinking of is uh, building and construction. I know a lot of students in Melbourne or Sydney, they might work as a plumber or as a handyman or as a uh, wall and floor tiler. All of those jobs are available in areas like Hobart and Perth. The reason is these cities are growing cities and so the government are placing a pressure on those cities and you know on how to accommodate an increasing influx of immigrants and international students so if you're working in the industry of uh, building and construction you might have a big plus okay so um, I have a student here he's working as a um, was it a machine operator uh, for a construction site and the salary is pretty decent. Uh, I think it was about uh, 27 to $30 an hour. Um, and you know, because he had experience back in Melbourne, so that was a big advantage for him when he applied for the job in Hobart. Another job you can think of is doing farming. So when I say farming here, I don't mean that you have to go out there and open your own farm. But what I'm trying to say here is you can work for people who own the farm, okay? For example, we all know that Hobart, especially Tasmania, is very famous for its cherry. Every year, people from all over the world, they buy cherries you know, to send to their family, to eat, or to, to enjoy. And um, because Hobart is so famous for it, that's why the farms across Hobart and Tasmania, every year, they need a lot of workers, okay? So if you think you are physically fit, and you can do all of the labor demanding jobs okay farming could be a good spot for you okay you might want to go there apply for a job in picking packaging cleaning lifting anything uh, it would be um, very uh, rewarding because you know uh, i know some farms they can pay you up to 25 28 dollars an hour uh, but you have to be careful because you know over the last few years we heard of scammers and we heard of all of the you know sad stories of how the students are being ex exploited by the employers. Um, uh, you know, with saying that, I don't mean farming is a bad job. It is available and it is good if you can find a proper one. So what about the people who want to do in their specialized occupation like accountants or pharmacists or engineers? All right, I have to say that there is a chance. It's just much slimmer, okay? Um, every year, Utah's universities release, you know, I don't know, could be thousands of accountants, and there are not that many particular businesses that need accountants in Tasmania and in Hobart. So if you do a quick math, you can say, let's say there are about 20 spots for accountants and there are 2,000 students. Okay, then you will know how big the competition is. Uh, however, if you have the right strategy, if you have a good network, which I will mention later on, you will be able to stand out from the crowd. So once you have the right mindset and you know what jobs are available in these areas, the next thing you have to do is how to have a good strategy. The so first thing, you have to do the market research. I know people have been talking about this over and over and over and over again, but trust me, not many people are actually doing it. If I ask you a question right now, let's say if you want to move to Tasmania and you want to work as a barista, can you tell me how many coffee and restaurants are there? If you can come up with a rough number, that means you know something about it. But if you say, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know Peter, then you know nothing about your industry. And because you know nothing about your industry, you're not going to be able to find a job. Don't wait until you are actually here to do it. You have to do it before it, okay? If you're in Vietnam right now, you might want to join some uh, groups in, in you know, Brisbane or Hobart or Perth or Darwin just to know what people are doing in there and what, you know, what the, uh, the job market looks like. Also, when you do the job hunting, you have to do it online and offline. So when I say online, people just say, hey, you know, I'm just gonna sit at home, I send out my application and that's it. Yes, it works, but it doesn't really work to its full effectiveness, okay? If you really want a job, you have to go out there, physically walk into the place you want to apply 
and hand in the resume to the customer service desk or to the receptionist and tell them, hey, you know, I saw your advertisement on TV or on Facebook and I'm just here to make sure I hand in the resume. So if you can help me to forward that to your manager, that would be very, uh, very helpful. Um, you know, I would really, really appreciate it. And yes, something simple like that. I will, I will guarantee that they, you know, they will very, very, they will be happy to do it for you. Okay, no one's gonna say, hey, you know, get out, or I don't care about you. You know, that, that won't be harsh. Uh, but you know, if you can get in there and just hand in resume, you already increase your chance of competing. Uh, speaking of applying for a job, where can you really find the source of these, uh, you know, jobs advertisement? So uh, we all know certain places like Seek or Indeed. Those are the places that are, you know, advertising the, you know, uh, all the professional jobs. However, you can think of going to Gumtree. Gumtree is very special nowadays if you want to find a job because Gumtree actually is sending out a lot of advertisement on jobs hunting. Also, you might think of doing it on Facebook. And on Facebook, you can do it in two ways. If you go to Facebook, there is a function called, I think, jobs or something that, that you know, it will automate so it will automatically appear all of the jobs that are available in the market right now. You can apply for it directly, um, or you can just post a status and wait for the replies. You will be surprised. Trust me, you will be surprised by, by what people say, okay? For instance, I actually one time asked my student, um, he's, he lives in Sydney, but he, um, he's, uh, he was moving down to um, Hobart and he knew a lot of people down in Hobart. Uh, and I said, then why don't, you, why don't you just, you know, post on Facebook a status saying that you are moving down to uh, Hobart and see what people respond if they know any jobs. And I think in the comments, there were more than a couple of them uh, actually saying that there are vacancies in the, uh, the factories that they were doing. And um, yes, he ended up having a job even before he got to Hobart. So what I want to say here is uh, utilize everything, okay? Exploit all of the resources you have. Uh, if you know Facebook, have Facebook, do it on Facebook, do it on Twitter, do it on LinkedIn, do it on, um, you know, Gumtree, Indeed, Seek, any, any channel that you can think of, utilize them. And also another thing that is very important and that is the biggest mistake that I find people are doing is they use a uniform resume. They use only one resume and they send to 10 different positions, 10 different jobs. And that is not right. Just think about wearing the same dress to every single um, events in the world, okay? If you go to a funeral with the same dress, you go to a wedding with the same dress, you go to a concert with the same dress, you go to the graduation ceremony with the same dress, it will be very unlikely for you to be noticed. So it's the same thing in here. If you send the same resume to all the different jobs, then it will be very hard for you to be noticed. You know, you will not be standing out in a crowd. So what you should be doing is you should customize your resume. The reason why I'm saying you need to customize your resume is every job, it will require um, certain things, certain, you know, particular um, uh, qualifications or experiences or certain skill sets. And one uniform, you know, uh, they call it one size fit all uh, resume will not do the job. You know, if let's say, for example, I am a, um, a PT teacher, okay, I will need an assistant who knows English. And you send me a resume, you have four years working in the restaurants and two years working as an accountant, that's not gonna help. I will not choose you whatsoever, okay? So what I want you to do is to customize not only your resume, but also your cover letter. It's something that you will, you will really, really have to look into if you want to land a job in a regional area. In your resume, you can change your name. Okay? When I say change your name, I'm saying we do it legally, okay? Uh, everybody in Australia, we are all qualified and we, it's, it's our right to be called by preferred name or a nickname, okay? So let's say uh, my Vietnamese name is something, 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 but people call me by Peter, so that's my preferred name, okay? If you apply, especially for job like barista or, um, uh, you know, uh, room attendants, those things that, you know, you have to come and show the employer what you can do, okay? You can change your name. 
So for an example, uh, a friend of mine, what he did was he wanted to apply for a uh, barista position in a restaurant. And after failing, I think, uh, tens of them, uh, he changed his name. Uh, so his name was maybe something Vietnamese. Uh, he changed to um, Tom Hoskin. Okay, so when he changed it, well, people actually call him Tom, they don't just call him by Vietnamese, but people call him call Tom, okay? And um, uh, when he sent in the, the, the application, um, the employer was very impressed. Oh, he got a lot of experiences and he didn't know this guy was Asian. There was, there was not cheating, we're just trying to get through the first competition round, you know. So uh, the employee actually rang him and asked him to come in to, you know, to demonstrate his skills. And he got a job after it, but not one job. He got three calls from different employers. Another important thing that I, I think people are really uh, unaware of is using networks. Believe it or not, in the small cities like uh, Hobart or Launceston or Geelong, People live and work like a small community. So the network in here is very powerful. Okay, so let's say I know that person and I have a job. The first thing I would call is, hey, I would call, I would call a person. I say, hey, look, I have a job. Would you, would you want to join in? Or uh, if I know, um, you know, Mr. B and Mr. B uh, has, uh, a relationship with Mr. C and Mr. C is a very good uh, accountant. If I need an accountant, I will call B and B will call C and C will come and work for me. Because we are a small community, so we work to support and help each other. And that is why they always prioritize and prefer to work with the local people. So if you want to be uh, advantageous, you want to stand out, you have to have a good network, okay? So a good network doesn't mean, you know, you have to know everybody. It just, you have a good relationship with the people you know, and you let them know that you are in a job hunt, okay? So let's say for an example, okay, this is, a uh, very very good experience that I uh, I had with a friend of mine, and I was also taught about it in university as well. That uh, so I had a friend. Um, let's just call him uh, A. Okay, so A uh, wanted to be an accountant, and you know, being an accountant uh, and finding a job in Hobart for an accountant position is really really hard. So what he did was um, he. Uh, did for himself something called a business card. We all uh, know what a business card is, right? Um, it doesn't have to be a professional, you know, you don't have to be a, a, an employer or a boss in order to have a business card. You can be an employee or you can be just a, someone who, who wants to find a job. You can have your own business card. So what he did was he created a business card and on the card he said his name, his qualifications, uh, like, a, like, like a snapshot of his resume and he put down a line saying uh, looking for opportunity in accounting position okay and so he went to different um, you know uh, marketing and networking and accounting events and even he joined the Vietnamese communication so um, even he joins the Vietnamese um, community and he knows a lot of people so what he did was, he was um, talking to them and at the end of the uh, conversation, he said, look, this is my um, business card, all my contacts in here. I'm actually looking for a job in this particular field. So if you know anything, you know, let me know. I would, I would shout you a coffee or I would buy you a drink for it, okay? And, and something that informal can really help you to stand out. Um, so with A, he did it not once but four or five times before he got a call from a person he met in a networking event. So that guy rang A and said, hey A, you know, um, it was uh, really, really good to, uh, to know you and, and talk to you on that day. Uh, I, you know, unfortunately, my company, we don't have any position as an accountant right now. However, I know someone else who is um, you know, in it, I'm, a, I'm an accountant, and I think you would be a best suit for it. So um, do you mind if I just you know, drop him your uh, contact info? See, it's that simple. So I actually got a job for himself, and that's something I wanna share with you, okay? The power of network. It really exists. Um, it, you know, it might not exist in big cities like Melbourne and Sydney where you can apply anywhere and they have to use machine to really uh, filter out the candidates. But in 
um, in cities like uh, Hobart and Launceston and other uh, regional areas, it really comes down to the people you know and the network and how your personal image uh, impacts them. And one more thing that people don't care about is English. I cannot stress it enough, but English is so important. Just imagine you want to go and work for a restaurant where you have to serve uh, 50 to 100 um, people, Australian people a day, and you can barely speak English. How do you expect uh, to find a job down there, right? If you want to work in a, an accounting firm, we have a lot of people who are Australian, they are born here and you want to, to communicate, to work with them, you want to get a job in there, but you can't speak good English. How can you expect to find yourself in those positions? Okay, and also having a good English can uh, prove that you have the ability to learn, to communicate, to exchange your idea, and especially to present what you want to say to them. Uh, so having a good English will be the number one thing. Okay, if you are having some free time now, not doing anything, then improving your English will be very important. I know, and you know, big four companies like KPMG, um, they also ask for, you know, PTE or IELTS of eight or 90 uh, in order to be uh, having a spot in there because they really, really value the people who have good English. So if you want to be able to have a chance to work in those company, make sure you improve your English first. I hope this video gives you some good insight about finding a job in regional areas. Uh, make sure you do your uh, market research, you have a good strategies, you follow, you open your network, and as long as you can have a good English, you will be able to secure a good job in area like Hobart or Darwin or Geelong, okay? I believe in you. Uh, if I can do it, then you can do it too. Good luck and see you next time.